everyone, it's Casey. I'm back with another video and this one is going to be a little bit different than my typical video where I talk about Blythe dolls and custom dolls. Um, I also make cloth dolls. I've made videos about them in the past. So every now and then I have a topic that comes up related to my cloth dolls that I need to discuss or address. Um, and right now, during this time, I'm having a lot of requests for fabric. So I dye my own fabric to make my cloth dolls. Um, and I don't sell it regularly. I only sell the fabric if I'm asked um, specifically to make it. And I've been asked a lot recently, I think because a lot of people are trapped at home and so they're buying my cloth doll patterns and needing the fabric and, and not able to get out themselves um, or to find what they need. So I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, but I have held off because um, it just wasn't a priority. But now with so many people asking, I thought it would be the perfect time to share. So one of the challenges that I've had um, keeping fabric in stock for myself is finding the supplies. So basically I buy fa the fabric that I use from Joanne Fabrics. Um, it comes in white and so then I have to dye it myself and I've perfected my dyeing process. I've been making cloth dolls for about 15 years now, maybe a little more. Um, so I have the same process for dyeing fabric and I've never shared that process um, and I'm going to today, but last week um, I had run out of fabric, I had run out of dye, and unfortunately it was just expensive to order online. Um, just a bottle of dye was gonna be two to three times the cost of in the store. And the fabric, sometimes it's hard for me to tell online if I'm getting the right fabric. I didn't have the end of the bolt giving me the um, specific fabric number. So I was just too worried to order online. So I ventured out to Joanne Fabrics and if you've been there, if it's open in your area and you've been there, um, they have a lot of procedures right now. Basically there's a limited amount of people can go in the store, which means you have to wait outside six feet apart and um, it's not super convenient right now to just pop in somewhere and, and I don't want to anyway. Um, but I did it and I got the fabric, um, but then I couldn't find the dye. They were sold out of specifically the dye that the color that I needed. So I went to the other Joanne Fabrics because we have two in my city. And again, same situation, had to stand in line and wait and they again didn't have the dye. So I came home and did a little searching again and I found that if I ordered the dye, the dye is by the brand Rit Dye, and I found that if I ordered directly from them, I could get the retail, the typical retail price of the dye in the store. Um, but I am such a penny pincher, I did not want to have to pay for shipping because, again, to me that was an extra cost. So I discovered through them I would need to buy 11 bottles of dye in order to get free shipping. So that's what I did because I figured I always need the dye and I'm never going to not need it. And so I might have dye now for six months to a year. Um, although I'm not sure because it really takes so... It takes about two bottles a bolt is what I use. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, five and a half bolts. And yeah, I mean, it's probably about a year's worth of fabric if I'm only using the fabric for myself and not um, selling it to others. And so far I've sold about four yards in the last two weeks, which is probably more than I've sold um, in the entire last year so and I have a couple of people waiting for me to figure out this dying situation so I just had to tell you um, that's how I ended up getting it and the dye that you need is tan specifically tan and then pink and we're going to move over to the washing machine where I'm going to show you how I dye the fabric um, but I first wanted to open this up and show you this is the tan dye if you're making, um, if you're wanting to have a Caucasian type skin tone, all you need is tan and pink. 
If you want to make a darker skin tone, an ethnic skin tone, you're going to use the tan, a dark brown, and pink. Um, and it specifically needs to be dark brown. Again, I'm going to show you by the washer where I keep my dye. Um, there's another brown, and I can't remember what it's called. It might be chocolate brown or something. You don't want that one. It ends up making the fabric very reddish. So um, I have not found another way to do this with the correct color. Um, and I prefer the liquid because it's already dissolved and um, the powder does not always dissolve well and can damage the fabric. Well, not damage it, but if you don't make sure it's dissolved, it can um, put marks on the fabric. So definitely liquid. So the fabric, I'm gonna show you um, The fabric is here. I have a bolt and I'm trying to put it so you can see it and read it. So if you're looking for this fabric, you're going to find it in the performance section of the store. So where they have the fabric that's for um, making like, um, what are they? Dance wear or leotard type stuff. For gymnastics dance and um, like uh, ice skating so that's the section you can find it in so what's funny is that section can be very bright and boisterous um, but I'm just getting the white and they actually changed the formula of this fabric it is now 94% cotton and 6% spandex it used to be 90% cotton and 10% spandex and it did make a difference. Um, this fabric is a little stiffer. Um, it changed the look of my doll just a little bit, but it's still working fine. I haven't decided to try to find something different. Um, so that's the formula. If you're looking for something similar where you live, if you don't have Joann's, you know, I would look for about 90% cotton, 10% uh, spandex or somewhere close to that. The retail price of it is $17 a yard. Um, if you're familiar with Joann's, they typically have coupons, so I do try to get it on sale if possible. Um, it's not always possible. So the yard is gonna be 17. A bottle of dye is around 450 for one bottle. So it ends up being a little bit expensive to get a yard if you just want a yard. So I sell the fabric in my shop, in my cloth doll shop, for $25 a yard, and that includes shipping in the US. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there. If you don't wanna try to do it yourself and you wanna get it from me, that's what I charge um, to do it. So that's the fabric. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because it gives you the SKU number, and that's why I asked them to give this to me. So now I should be able to order online and not have to go into the store at all. Probably not for a long, long time. The bolt typically comes with six yards if, if no one has bought any of it. A lot of times the full bolt is there when I get there. Um, so I don't think this one was a full bolt, but basically what I do, whether I have a full bolt or not, is I take all of the fabric off of the bolt and then I cut the fabric in half. So typically I dye the fabric in three yard segments. Um, since this isn't a full bolt, it'll probably be more like um, two yard segments, and that's fine. Um, I haven't had a good experience with trying to dye the entire bolt in one go, so if you're new to dyeing fabric in general, um, and I'm definitely not an expert, but I consider myself an expert with this fabric, um, but I assume this is true for a lot of fabric, um, your washing machine or the container that you're putting the fabric and the dye in needs to have space to move so that the dye or so the fabric doesn't get pinched up and the dye um, concentrated in areas. If you want the fabric to come out with a very even color, then you need to make sure that there's space. And I think that's why when I've tried to dye an entire bolt at once, it has not 
gone well. And when I say it hasn't gone well, it just may basically means that the fabric didn't get a smooth color. It had um, dye marks and, and that still sometimes happens. Um, and it can depend on your washing machine and how well your washing machine will agitate the fabric. So a couple things on washing machines, this does not work if you have a front loading washer. Um, you do need a top loading washer. You need a washer that um, has the ability to fill up and then let you open it when it is full of water. Um, basically is the reason why the front loaders don't work. And um, also a larger washing machine with a lot of space to move around. Um, so we're gonna move over to the washing machine and I'm gonna show you how we get started. Okay, so here we are at the washer and the first thing you want to do is cut the fabric and shake it out and throw it in as it is white. And then we're going to fill up um, the washing machine with water. So the best water is hot water. However, every washing machine is different. Every situation is different. And my washing machine actually doesn't really fill up with hot water. Sometimes it's warm. Um, but most of the time it's not. And so I found that it doesn't really make a difference. So I do set it to hot, um, but most of the time it does not fill up hot. If yours does, keep in mind, some washers do fill up with very hot water. Um, so we're going to fill up the tank with the fabric inside so that we're pre-soaking the fabric. But then as soon as it's full, we're gonna take the fabric out and then put the dye in. So just keep in mind, um, that you will have to reach in and grab the fabric and it could be hot water. So just be careful um, depending on your washing machine. The same thing with cycles. So um, this washing machine, I've gone through several different washing machines throughout my doll career. So, um, you know, it's always kind of hit and miss on what's gonna work when it's a new washer. So with this washer which i've had now for two years um i've tried different cycles just the regular cycle um, but i actually like the bulky items and sheets it seems um to work the best since that's kind of what this is as far as agitating it however the regular does seem to work fine too for the most part so you have a regular setting you just want to make sure whatever setting you're choosing has good agitation so you don't really want to put it on delicate um, because delicate the main reason that delicate is different is it is less agitation on your clothing um, so you want that agitation if that makes sense whatever um, cycle that is on your washing machine so I'm gonna go ahead and start this it's gonna start filling up and I will turn off the camera and once it's full, we'll come back and I'll show you what I do at that point. It's gonna be very loud when I start it. So um, let's get that started and we'll be back as soon as it's full. Okay, so once it has filled with water and your fabric is in there and nice and wet, you're gonna wanna take a container or something. I use a garbage bag and you're gonna to wanna to pull the fabric out, and so it's gonna be wet, so that's why I use a garbage bag, um, but you could use a bucket. If my washer is literally in my kitchen um, dining area, I live in a small apartment, so um, if your washer is outside, it might be easier if the floor gets wet, but in here I have to be pretty careful. So um, you're gonna reach in and grab your fabric. Again, if it's hot, just keep in mind Depending on your washer, it could be really hot. Mine actually is kind of hot this time. And then keep all your water contained and then I just set the bag on the floor. And now we're gonna add the dye. So again, if you're doing Caucasian fabric, you're going to want one full bottle of tan. I've experimented with using less um, and it has not come out as well. So one full bottle. I shake it up really well first. Um, the bottles I typically buy don't have this on them. So you can take that off 
and then just pour it in. I get really close down to the water to pour it because it is dye and if it splashes on your clothes or your washer, well, it probably won't stain the washer. It wipes off pretty well, but if you get it on your clothes, obviously it will be stained. And then you're gonna want some pink. So I usually just have a bottle of pink here. You just need a splash of it. And I thought about how I wanted to tell you this, if I wanted to measure it or not. Um, but the problem is, is I literally just do a small splash. Less is more when it comes to pink, so don't think, well, did I do enough? I'll do a little more. Probably it's fine if you do less um, because you can get really pink fabric. So I just do whoop, just a little splash. Probably not even, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon or two, a couple tablespoons. If you want to dye dark fabric, you would then add half a bottle of dark brown, and this is the one you want that says dark brown. If you see one that says chocolate brown, that's not the one you want, you want dark brown. And then I usually um, spin it around a little bit to mix it. I've had washers before that when you close the lid, they automatically start agitating, but this washer doesn't. When you close the lid, it starts filling with more water and it takes a few minutes to get back going. So I just hand mix, hand mix it um, because you need to mix that dye really well. So the problems with fabric coming out wrong is, as I said, if the fabric gets bunched up too much, it can create lines in the fabric of dye. Or if the dye is not mixed really um, saturated in the water, it can also make spots or, or weird marks. So you just want to get it mixed really well and now you're gonna put your fabric back in and it's gonna be all wet and bunched up so what I do is I dump it in and then go ahead and hand mix it around a little bit if it's really hot water this might be hard for you but just push it down and mix it around and sort of keep it from bunching it's going to bunch up anyway, but getting it mixed in really well and down in the dye. And then go ahead and close your lid. And mine will start filling with water. And then it will start. So we're going to move away from the washer and I will tell you the next step. So when the fabric is done doing its dyeing cycle, then I usually run it again on a gentle or a light cycle with a tiny bit of soap just to make sure that it, it is even. And then I put it on in the dryer and I put it on low heat until it's dry and then it's done. Um, so I thought I would get out some different fabrics so I can tell you a little bit about what you can expect for color. So the dye that we're doing is Caucasian and both of these fabrics were dyed using that process, but as you can see, they have different tones. One of them is the older fabric that had the different blend of cotton and spandex this is the newer fabric with the less um, uh, spandex and more cotton. But either way, your fabric is going to come out differently, even when you do basically the almost exact same formula. Um, you're going to get Caucasian, but it still could be a little bit different in tone. And some of that can be it can depend on how much pink you put in. It could depend on um, how much fabric you put in. So as I said in the beginning of the video, I normally cut a six yard bolt in half. And so typically I dye about three yards at a time, but like the bolt I have today was not full six yards. So when I cut it in half, it's probably gonna be two something. And so that can change the color of the fabric when it's done because the dye will be more concentrated um, and there'll be less fabric. So 
I personally like that the fabric comes out differently um, mainly because it makes different skin tones and and I like that so that's with Caucasian now with the ethnic color it's the same situation so both of these fabrics were actually dyed in the same batch but they were cut into smaller pieces so I f actually this was surprising to me when it happened because these went into the same dye bath um, this was just a much smaller piece than this was when it went in so this one dyed more of a lighter brown and this got a really nice dark color I was actually really excited about that because I've been wanting another nice darker color. Um, so again, you can experiment with the size of the fabric and the dye if you're interested in getting different skin tones. The only thing that I haven't been able to do is really replicate something very easily and I haven't done enough experimenting to do that because I'm okay with different um, tones but um, I imagine this one came out darker because it was a much smaller piece and it probably just had more room I don't know um, so there may be someone watching that knows more about dyeing fabric than I do about why that might happen but for me it was a happy surprise so this fabric was dyed with the process we used but then an extra half a bottle of dark brown so Anyway, when our fabric is done washing, we'll pull it out and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay everyone, so you can see our fabric is done. It's done drying and it came out perfectly smooth and perfectly Caucasian colored fabric. Um, so that's about it as far as dyeing fabric. It's pretty simple once you get the process down. Um, the only other thing I want to mention about my fabric that I'm hoping I'll be able to show you on video is if you're buying my patterns, um, you'll see this kind of explained, but it's harder to show in photos. So if you have show, um, if you have sewing experience, you'll know that um, sewers talk about the right side and the wrong side of the fabric. I don't really like the terms right and wrong because um, I work with fabric in a creative way making you know soft toys and honestly you know you can use the fabric any direction you want to create different things so it's not necessarily right or wrong but I'll give you some information about why there is a right and wrong side on this fabric and what it means to use each side so there even though it's hard to tell so my mom I cannot tell the difference um, but she doesn't have great eyesight so if that's you i apologize I, I realize it's hard to tell but the difference is that on the wrong side you're gonna it's more ribbed and ribbed means there's lines in it um and on the right side it's more smooth and there's less lines and so the reason why that matters is because if you're going to paint eyes on the doll um or anything like that it it works better if it's painted on the smooth side of the doll. The other reason is as you stretch the fabric to stuff it for a doll, if you have the ribbed side out, you're gonna get these lines. Um, and I just don't really like the way that looks. On the other side, as it stretches, you're not gonna get those lines um, in the same way. So those are kind of the two reasons why there's a right and wrong side of the fabric. Um, if you can't tell when you get your fabric, um, you know, you probably will be able to tell once you stretch it and stuff it. So you may want to mark it. Um, you can mark it with a permanent marker, you know, on the edge where, where you can remind yourself going forward. Um, otherwise, that's the only real suggestion I have for that. So anyway, I am going to probably order another bolt because this is all I have now of Caucasian and I have a couple of people waiting for yards of it and so it's going to be gone pretty much today so if you're interested in me dyeing fabric for you check out my shop I'll put a link to my cloth doll shop below where you can contact me about fabric um, and I'm going to get some more ordered today so that I have more on hand um, otherwise as I said you can 
try dyeing it yourself and, and let me know how that goes. So thanks as always so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Um, it really helps me to grow my following if you subscribe. So please subscribe and I will be back with another video soon. Bye everyone. Woo.